today we are doing critical reasoning assumption questions. And I know everybody thinks these are really hard and they can be a little tricky until somebody shows you a technique that lets that assumption basically jump right out at you. The assumption like appears like magic and I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's not that hard to learn. I'm also gonna give you my top five tips to raise your GMAT score 50 points fast. It's a PDF, the tips are super specific, they're super actionable. If you do these things, your score is gonna go up and it's completely free. You can download yours right in the description. Okay, let's tackle those assumption questions. I'm gonna show you the easy way to find any assumption in any of these questions. First, pick out the conclusion, and then say to yourself, that conclusion will work, but only if. Then pick out the answer choice that best finishes that sentence. That's gonna be your assumption, it's that easy. In other words, if the answer choice you pick out is true, then the conclusion has a real shot at working. And remember, when you're picking out a conclusion, you're looking for things like what's gonna happen, or the outcome, or the goal, or what we're trying to accomplish, something like that. Okay, we're gonna look at a very simple example, and then a very realistic example, and I think you'll get the hang of it. Okay, let's take a look at the simple example. Due to his recent move to a bigger, more expensive city, Bruce, a GMAT tutor, is raising his rates by $50. First thing we do, we pick out the conclusion. What will happen or what's the goal? Well, the goal is for Bruce to raise his rates by $50. That's the conclusion. So to find the assumption, we say, Bruce will be successful raising his rates by $50, but only if. Now, anything that finishes that sentence logically is a valid assumption. So let's take a look at some valid assumptions. Each one of these finishes that sentence logically. Bruce will be successful raising his rates by $50, but only if there's not a glut of GMAT tutors in the new city. Bruce will be successful raising his rates by $50, but only if there are enough students in the new city. Bruce will be successful raising his rates by $50, but only if Bruce is good at his job. Bruce will be successful raising his rates by $50, but only if schools still require the GMAT. Okay, that's how it works. Let's take a look at a more realistic example. This example is pretty similar to what you might find on the test. So take a second, read this to yourself, pause the video if you need to, and then we'll dive in. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is pick out the conclusion. What's gonna happen? What are we trying to accomplish? Yep, that's right. We're gonna install this optical sensor on the Delicious Chip assembly line. That's the conclusion. So to find the assumption, we're gonna say, the optical sensor will work on the assembly line, but only if. The answer choice that logically completes that sentence is the correct answer choice. All right, so let's take a look at our answer choices. The optical sensor will work on the assembly line, but only if the optical sensor only works in natural light. Now, wait a minute, A is definitely out. The assembly line is inside. So if the optical sensor only works in natural light, it won't work on the assembly line. We're looking for something to indicate that tells us it will work. Okay, let's try B. The optical sensor will work on the assembly line, but only if the salt and grease used to cook and process the potato chips do not degrade the optical sensor's performance. B is possible. B is saying, look, the only way this optical sensor is gonna work is if the salt and grease in the factory doesn't screw up the sensor. In other words, answer choice B simply has to be true in order for the sensor to work on the assembly line. We'll keep B around, it's a strong contender. Let's take a look at C. The optical sensor will work on the assembly line, but only if the optical sensor has been used successfully in other factory settings. C is actually out. Just because it worked in other factory settings doesn't necessarily mean it will work in this particular factory. Let's look at D. The optical sensor will work on the assembly line, but only if the cost of the purchase and maintenance of the optical sensor is less than the cost of using employees to sort the chips manually. Now, D is out. We don't care about costs or profits. Notice the argument only cares if the optical sensor will work on the line or not, not how cost effective it is. D is out of scope. Let's take a look at E. The optical sensor will work on the assembly line, but only if Florida recently loosened regulations for potato manufacturers and potato processing plants. Again, E is out of scope. We're only interested if the optical sensor will work on the potato chip line. We don't care about regulations. I guess maybe we would if they mentioned very specific regulations about using optical sensors on potato chip lines, but they don't. So E is out of scope. That means B is our correct answer. Very nicely done. 
So the easy way to pick out assumptions in any of these questions is to first pick out the conclusion and then say, well, that conclusion will work, but only if. The answer choice that best completes that sentence is your assumption. Good job. Nice job. That's how it's done. You just pull out the conclusion and then you say to yourself, well, that's only true if, and then choose the answer choice that best completes that sentence. Also, don't forget about your free gift, top five tips to raise your GMAT score 50 points fast. That's yours for free. Download it in the description. Great job. See you next time.